Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Ms. Dinesh, Dinesha Devnarayan, Mr. Kai Lishle, Kabinde, Mr. Sapiwe Mchunu, Mr. Piyush Kandalwal, distinguished guests and online viewers. Namaskar and welcome to a very interesting series, and that is Kill Vishwa. Today being episode two, indeed, Kill Vishwa is a world of a spot. Today we will be interacting with the very talented Miss Dinesha Devnarayan, who is a cricket coach, and she will be interviewed by Mr. Kailishle Kabindeji. And just a brief back. Uh, ground about Dinesha Ji. Dinesha Ji is an international cricketer who made the 29 one day international and 20, uh, two, uh, 2020 international appearances for South Africa, uh, the South African national women's cricket team in 2008. She was a member of the South African cricket team at the 2009 ICC Women's World 2020. On the 6th of April 2020, she was appointed as South Africa's women, uh, women's under-19 head coach as well as the Women's National Academy head coach. When her appointment as head coach for both South African women's under-19 side and the Women's National Academy was announced, the general consensus amongst those who did not know their women's cricket was uh, that a cricket of South Africa may well have had Dinesha Devnarayanji in mind when they created the, the dual post. And just a brief background about Mr. Kaya Ji. Uh, Kaya Ji is a, a young, enthusiastic, positive-minded uh, individual who has a passion for motivating young individuals to become the best version of themselves. He is the founder of Dream Big, Stay Humble NPO, inspiring and motivating the youth of uh, the world. Namaste and welcome Dinesh Ji and Kaya Ji for your introduction on episode two of Kill Vishwa. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the huge mouthful of introduction. Um, good, evening, Dave. good morning to everyone who's, who's here on the live. Um, just to start it off, um, Dinesha, thank you so much for your time. Um, first of all, I just want to find out more about what inspired you to become a cricket player. And the first of all question would be, what inspired you to take up the sport of cricket? And for how long have you been playing the cricket? Have you been playing cricket for? Yeah, I think, look, I think I first fell in love with soccer, to be honest. Uh, I grew up in a small, small town called Springs, which is Bakerton, Johannesburg. Um, and, you know, there was a, there was a lot of outdoor activities, but most of them were just with guys. I mean, the girls stayed indoors and, you know, I had to, I had an older sister and a younger sister and it's, you know, your usual Barbie dolls or you inside helping mom with chores and, you know, <laughs> I wasn't really good at that, so um, I joined my brothers at first, and you know we just started playing outdoor sports, um, lots of. So it was soccer. There was like summertime games, that sort of thing, and then there was a cricket World Cup, nineteen ninety four, um, and you know there was there was a lot of hype in South Africa about it, and you know I just asked my dad and my brothers, and I said like. The only like guys play the sport, like the females play it, and they were not sure. And they said, Yeah, I think it's just, you know, it's just guys. Um, and then I said, No, I think I some like I was a little kid then, and I said, No, that can't be right. You know, there's something that's gotta change. Um, but in any case, so the World Cup happened, and I think we formed teams, and each of us was a country. And I think at that time I was the West Indies. I had the last pick, so I had to be West Indies. Um, and that's how I initially fell in love with the sport. Um, then we moved to Durban 1999 and my dad went searching for, you know, girls cricket. And luckily enough, he actually met Trisha Chetty's dad, uh, who didn't live very far away from us. And, you know, she's a current wicket keeper batter for the Protea women's team. And he said, look, yeah, um, there is girls cricket. There's women's cricket. Uh, although Trisha plays with the boys. So my dad told me about this and I said, you know, that's the first thing. The first problem is that we girls, we need to stand together. You know, we need to put up this front and we need to promote the sport. But so I initially joined Chatswood United 
and it was an open division women's team and I was like a really really small little girl playing there and when I completed my first season I was actually the leading wicket taker and my dad said look you know you're really young and you're doing so well in the open women's division maybe don't you think if you play with the boys that your game will strengthen so at that time, at first, when he said it, I was like, no, there's no way, you know, we've got to, you know, girls got to stand together. We've got to let, um, you know, we've got to let, like, show them the women's cricket can stand alone. Uh, but I listened to my dad eventually, and I started playing with the boys, right? So I started from, um, it was from under 11s, right, up until under 17s. Um, and and then obviously from there I just got selected for KZ in schools, SA schools, and then I got my national call up in 2008. Um, you know, but from the time the first time that I picked up the bat, or even that ball, I was like in love with the sport. I was really in love with the sport. It's it's pure passion. Um, I think the intricacies of the game is is what I fell in love with. It's it's not, you know, it's not black and white. <laughs> You want to separate yourself from the rest you you've got to do things differently which i really enjoyed about the game thank you so much man um so it's a very very deep thought for you to tell us the story of your background you same with your father and your father to actually accept you to play sports of cricket as as a female um the second question is going to dive deep to what inspired you to we want to inspire you to become a cricket player and the challenges that you face as a female to be in the sports of cricket yeah, I think that's a good question. I think I get asked that a lot. Um, so I think the first thing is that obviously when I started playing cricket, you know, there wasn't enough opportunities for girls cricket. You know, I mean, we had to pay for school tours. Um, it wasn't as recognized. So in terms of the marketing or the recognition you get, it, it, it just wasn't there. And, you know, that really hurt me as, as, a, as a woman cricketer because, you know, even though it's male and female, the fact that, you know, we couldn't get recognized for, I mean, making KZ in schools or making or playing for your country, you know, women's, the women cricketers weren't paid for numerous of years. I mean, this only changed in the last eight years that women are contracted players. I mean, it took so long for us to get to this point where we can actually call it a profession now. Um, so obviously that was a massive challenge. I mean, I used to go to uh, university, study, and you still got to find time to put in the work with training because you want to be the best at what you do. So you've got to, there's a lot of sacrifices that you actually make. And at that time, I didn't know it was going to turn professional. So you do it purely on passion. I mean, you pay for transport, you pay for cricket equipment, which is very expensive. You know, you pay for tour fees and, you know, cricket's not giving you anything apart from the passion of it. So I think, obviously, from a financial point of view, it was really draining. And I think that's where I respect my dad a lot, is the fact that he said, I don't mind you playing cricket. I can see that it's your passion. I can see that you're really good at it. But just make sure that you always study or that you complete your degree and stuff. You know, and as it stands now, I, I do have two degrees, which I'm doing nothing, absolutely nothing with. Um, but I'm so grateful to see where the sport has gone now. You know, I can actually say I'm a professional coach. I was a professional cricketer. You know, I got paid to play sport, which was massive. Uh, but obviously that was towards later on in my career. I think earlier on, I mean, the stigmas with girls playing cricket wasn't nice. You know, there's a lot of name calling going on. Uh, you play with boys on the park. You can only imagine how they cheer up in you. But the best revenge is when you get them out or you hit them for the six. I promise you. I think that's where your credibility grew. Um, also, like you got a lot of respect, which I actually enjoyed at first because it kind of made me focus a lot more on what I needed to do. Uh, and then after that, I think the respect I got from the guys after that, there was, you know, you could you could feel that that was earned, which is always good. And um, yeah, I think now that I'm in a coaching position, um, I think the difficult thing is that it's still very male dominated with the coaches. There's a lot of male coaches compared to female coaches. You know, I remember doing my level three coaching certificate in 2015. And I was the only female in that room. And there were 33 male coaches, which includes Charles Langefeld, 
Prasanna, who was the analyst for the men's team. Uh, you know, there was ex franchise players, ex pro tier men players. And, at, you know, the first two days, I just sat there quiet. I was, I was in, in awe at what I've actually done to get to this position. But um, I think towards the end of that week or that course, you know, I actually felt so much empowered, actually. Because it's not the fact that you're a woman that makes you a good coach. It's not the fact that you're a male that makes you a good coach. You know, it's how you read the game. It's how you analyze the game. It's how you interpret it. You know, it's how you bring out the best in players. And towards the end of that, when I qualified for my level three coaching certificate, I realized it doesn't matter what skin color you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter your gender. If you know how to take a person or a team from the position that they in to a better place. I just felt like I have the power to do that. Um, and I have the ambition for it as well. But I think being a female in any sport will always have its challenges. I always say that the world is set up for females to fail. Um, just the way how things were done in the past. But I do believe we're in a transitional phase where women are actually becoming so empowered, not in an authority way, but just so that their presence are felt, so that people get different perspective on things. And I think it's an absolutely critical phase where we are now. I mean, if you look at all types of sports, I mean, if you look at the tennis as well, and if you look at all these women figures coming through, it just gives life and sport and everything else a different outlook, which is really nice. And then I'm hoping in the next 20 to 30 years from now, you know, young coaches or young players won't be having conversations like this year because all of this year has been paved for them. And it's just about going out there and executing your skills. Um, thank you so much for answering the question. Um, you actually need to deep to tell us more of yourself and what made you become a strong cricket player and what challenges you came through and how do you take those challenges on and off the field? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think I get asked that a lot. Um, so I think the first thing is that obviously when I started playing cricket, you know, there wasn't enough opportunities for girls cricket. You know, I mean, we had to pay for school tours. Um, it wasn't as recognized. So in terms of the marketing or the recognition you get, it, it, it just wasn't there. And, you know, that really hurt me as, as, a, as a woman cricketer because, you know, even though it's male and female, the fact that, you know, we couldn't get recognized for, I mean, making KZN schools or making or playing for your country, you know, women's, the women cricketers weren't paid for numerous of years. I mean, this only changed in the last eight years that women are contracted players. I mean, it took so long for us to get to this point where we can actually call it a profession now. Um, so obviously that was a massive challenge. I mean, I used to go to uh, university, study, and you still got to find time to put in the work with training because you want to be the best at what you do. So you've got to, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. And at that time, I didn't know it was going to turn professional. So you do it purely on passion. I mean, you pay for transport, you pay for cricket equipment, which is very expensive. You know, you pay for tour fees and, you know, cricket's not giving you anything apart from the passion of it. So I think, obviously, from a financial point of view, it was really draining. And I think that's where I respect my dad a lot, is the fact that he said, I don't mind you playing cricket. I can see that it's your passion. I can see that you're really good at it. But just make sure that you always study or that you complete your degree and stuff. You know, and as it stands now, I, I do have two degrees, which I'm doing nothing, absolutely nothing with. Um, but I'm so grateful to see where the sport has gone now. You know, I can actually say I'm a professional coach. I was a professional cricketer. You know, I got paid to play sport, which was massive. Uh, but obviously that was towards later on in my career. I think earlier on, I mean, the stigmas with girls playing cricket wasn't nice. You know, there's a lot of name calling going on. Uh, you play with boys in the park. You can only imagine how they cheer up in you. But the best revenge is when you get them out or you hit them for the six. I promise you. I think that's where your credibility grew. Um, also, like you got a lot of respect, which I actually enjoyed at first because it kind of made me focus a lot more on what I needed to do. 
Uh, and then after that, I think the respect I got from the guys after that, there was, you know, you could you could feel that that was earned, which is always good. And um, yeah, I think now that I'm in a coaching position, um, I think the difficult thing is that it's still very male dominated with the coaches. There's a lot of male coaches compared to female coaches. You know, I remember doing my level three coaching certificate in 2015. And I was the only female in that room. And there were 33 male coaches, which includes Charles Langefeld, Prasanna, who was the analyst for the men's team. Uh, you know, there was ex-franchise players, ex-protea men players. And, at, you know, the first two days, I just sat there quiet. I was I was in, in awe at what I've actually done to get to this position. But um, I think towards the end of that week or that course, you know, I actually felt so much empowered, actually, because it's not the fact that you're a woman that makes you a good coach. It's not the fact that you're a male that makes you a good coach. You know, it's how you read the game. It's how you analyze the game. It's how you interpret it. You know, it's how you bring out the best in players. And towards the end of that, when I qualified for my level three coaching certificate, I realized it doesn't matter what skin color you are, doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter your gender. If you know how to take a person or a team from the position that they're in to a better place, I just felt like I have the power to do that. Um, and I have the ambition for it as well. But I think being a female in any sport, will always have its challenges. I always say that the world is set up for females to fail. Um, just the way how things were done in the past. But I do believe we're in a transitional phase where women are actually becoming so empowered, not in an authority way, but just so that their presence are felt so that people get different perspectives on things. And I think it's an absolutely critical phase where we are now. I mean, if you look at all types of sports, I mean, if you look at the tennis as well, and if you look at all these women figures coming through, it just gives life and sport and everything else a different outlook, which is really nice. And then I'm hoping in the next 20 to 30 years from now, you know, young coaches or young players won't be having conversations like this years because all of this has been paved for them. And it's just about going out there and executing your skills. For this question, I'd like to find out more about what are the benefits of playing the sports of cricket and how and how can one just form themselves as, a, as an individual and, and with the sports? Yeah, like I said, it's definitely prof professionalized now. Um, let's just talk about non-monetary um, aspects to the game first, is that it teaches you such core values, I think. You know, in terms of working with the team, you know, it's about diversities, managing diversities. It's about, um, you know, it, it teaches you such good values, actually. You know, uh, things of setting up cultures in the team and, you know, how you're going to, it, it can be goal-driven or, or whatever it may be. You, you you sort of have not, every single person that I've known play the game always tells me that the cricket team is their family. You know, it's a second family, which is something so unique. I don't think most sports get can say that. Um, so while you're going through all of these trains, it teaches you discipline, you know, it teaches you how to be committed. It teaches you how to take responsibility, which is something I think we all humans, not apart from sport need to do, you know, just be accountable for your actions. And, um, you know, it, 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 can, it can create such a good environment for you where you always want to be in a space where honesty is valued. And once honesty is valued, I think the most beautiful people or souls come out in that environment. So not where you're hidden and, and you're trying to be someone you're not. Um, so that's a lot of what values it can teach you. And then you get the, the most obvious, which is it's physical activity. So it should keep you younger. You know, it should add more years to your life. Um, you know, it, it's good cardiovascular exercises. Um, you get to meet, I mean, if you take it really seriously, um, you get to meet new people, new countries, new food, which is probably one of my favorite parts, trying <laughs> new food. <laughs> um, and yeah, look, it's given me an education. It's given me my first cup. You know, it's, it's, there's so much things to it. And, and now it's, it's, it's massive. I mean, girls can play 
in the Big Bash. They can play in the Kia Super League, which is actually now the 100. They can play in the Women's IPL, and that's lots of money. You know, girls are actually, I see girls now on Instagram or social media where, you know, people are buying their own houses now because that's the life that a cricket can give you. So, yeah, there's lots of benefits to it. Thank you so much for telling us more about that. Um, actually, actually, come back to what you said. I feel like there's really a lot of um, young individuals who play the sport of cricket and they take the sports and they take the sports very seriously on and off the field before they prep themselves to play on this field and to get ready for their competitors. With this question, I'd like to find out: Can you share some of the experiences of your journey in the sport of cricket, and what are those what are those cricket journeys within the sports and journeys, and what are the challenges that you came through? within the experience of the whole journey of cricket. Yeah, definitely. I think my first call-up, my first project call-up was definitely life-changing. You know, I was this little girl that only stayed in Johannesburg and in Durban and in Chatsworth. And you get your first call-up and now you've got to get on a plane. I've never been on a plane before. And, you know, and the rest of the girls, I mean, they've, they've done it so many times and you know, I've I've always had like a small kit bag. You know, sometimes you're not the neatest because you, you've never been out of your home, you know, out of your environment to experience that professionalism. And now I fly in a plane. My first two was in Stellenbosch. Thankfully, my dad came with me as well, which I'm very grateful for. And you're playing in magnificent cricket fields. Um, you know, so I, I think my first call up, my first tour was definitely life changing. It took me out of my comfort zone. I actually, I'm at that point, I was so comfortable with just being at home and playing cricket at the backyard club cricket that I actually thought that this is not for me. I don't like this feeling. Like I got so anxious. I got like anxiety actually. And I said, I don't want to be, I don't want to be positive. I just want to stay at home, stay in chats with, hit balls there. And you know, it's fine. I don't want to be this big superstar. And thankfully, that's why I have so much respect for my dad is because he told me that this is how life works. You know, even if you get a job, you're going to branch out, you're going to meet new people. Um, so that was definitely one of the big life lessons. And then I think the next one was to tour away from South Africa. I thought that was massive. You know, I've been to so many countries and I think my most heartbreaking one was Bangladesh. I think it also sits, it hits home a little bit because you're obviously of Indian descent and, you know, we think we're struggling at home, but then you go there and you see old, old ladies, you know, like proper grannies, you know, they carry in packets on the side, things on their head, they barefoot, they walk in on the streets, they sleep in on the streets. And I think that really hit home about just, if you really want to appreciate life and if you want to, you know, just make the most of your life and be appreciative for what you have. I think that's what Bangladesh taught me, is that there will always be someone that is going to have it worse off than you, no matter how bad you think your life is going. Um, And then I think when I played at Lords in England, I think we were the first women's cricket team to play there against England. We got smashed. <laughs> we got smashed. But that wasn't that wasn't the life lesson. <laughs> I think the life lesson there was you in an era of where the game is changing, and you've just made history. Like anything can happen to you tomorrow. No one can take the fact that you were the first, one of the first female cricketers to play at Lords. You know. So then, obviously, that, I think that's where the whole philosophy side came out of me as well. Um, and, and like I said, I think cricket's given me my job now, which I'm massively, massively grateful for. I don't think there's many coaches before, like a long time before, would say that, you know, this can be a profession. And this is what I live for. This, this job is everything. You know, I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like I'm working. I go to bed at night, smiling, know that I gave 150%. And then tomorrow's a new day, new challenge, new opportunities. It's given me an education. So fortunately, the you know, our, our minister didn't take our sport away from us. But, you know, the, these things can happen. And it's also given me an education. Like I said, I have the two degrees now. If that doesn't go, 
you know, you, you've got backup. So it's been, there's lots of life lessons um, and lots of things I'm grateful for because of cricket. And Dinesha, with this question, it might be a very tricky question, but I'd like to see how you're going to sum it up. What are the challenges you face during the sporting crickets and through your journey as an individual within the sporting crickets? Yeah, I think the first the, the first one was obviously the loss that I had to endure. Been away on been away on cricket tours. That was massive for me. I think that will put any person in a in a very bad place. Um so that was something really, really difficult for me. Um, I did have issues trying to get be myself again. I, I think that's the one thing. If I could go back, I would change more. Is probably seeing someone for it, you know, someone to guide me through, to talk me through it, you know. But I always thought I was a tough cookie, you know. I'll get it done on my own, and if I suffer, I'll suffer alone. As long as everyone else is happy. Um. You know, and, and there was there's challenges I also faced as an international cricketer. Like sometimes I just wasn't um, performing enough. You know, I wasn't putting the, well, the standards you should put as a pro chair. Um, and that, you know, that hurt my career a lot. Um, I did, I was very disappointed in myself as well. But I think also that's another reason why I coach is not to say that I'm blaming it on the coaches that I had. But I mean, if I look at the environments now compared to then, I always tell myself or my uh, peers that doesn't play anymore is that, you know, if we had access to this here, if we had this type of coaching, I promise you it would have been different players. So, you know, um, I did have quite a bit of challenges. And then, like I said, there was a financial implication as well, beginning because we weren't professionalized. So it's sort of like an opportunity cost that you'll never get back you know, that just goes away. Um, but thankfully, I ended my career being a contracted player. But yeah, I think those are a few challenges. And we all know there are very young individuals that look up to you. And within your coaching industry, there are kids that look up to you and want to become where you became through your sports and cricket. What advice can you give the viewers? Or what advice can you give to the interested people who want to stake in the sports of cricket and want to become a pro here one day? Yeah, I'll be like, why not? Huh? It's a very interesting sport. You learn a lot, a lot on and off the field. Um, I think if you're the type of person that likes to be challenged, cricket's definitely for you. Um, if you need um, an escape from life, I think people also find that in cricket. Um, and I just say, you know, whatever you do, you know, whether you're in a bad ball, just be authentic. You know, it's so... It's really good to have like role models, mentors, uh, people that we see on TV and try to emulate that. But I think it's really important to be authentic and, you know, be yourself. I think that's really important and fall in love with the sport. Give it a go. I mean, start with tennis ball and a bat or if you want to take it further, join a club, you know, get advice. And um, yeah, I think you'll be really blessed if you actually fall in love with the sport. Thank you so much, Dinesh, for actually telling us more what you can tell individuals to become a young pro to one day and what with one of the and, and and the kids that you're coaching. And to close off, I've got one more question for you is what what inspires you and what motives do you give out to young cricket players and for them to take on the sports of cricket? Yeah, so I, I think I answered that question earlier. I think the first and foremost thing is people. But if I have to have a hierarchy on those people, I'll go my mom first. My mom is probably the biggest. She's got the biggest hold over my heart. Um, <laughs> she's such she's such a strong woman. She's been through so much in life. But I, if I could even turn out half the woman she is, I will be really proud. So my mom, she inspires me to do absolutely anything I want. She thinks I'm superwoman anyway. She thinks I can do anything. <laughs> so I think that helps a lot. And then on that point, my family, you know, I'm blessed with a good support structure. You know, I've got good friends. Um, but I think what inspires me and motivates me actually is obviously making my family proud. That's 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 a massive thing for me. Um, God really inspires me. Um, 
you know, the more I'm getting into my faith, the more I'm realizing how, you know, how short our time is here and what we do with it is so important, you know. And I think there's something that's always big in the Bhagavad Gita. They speak about, you know, it's not about you. It's about how you make other people feel. And that really, you know, spoke to me a lot. And then, like I said, life inspires me and people inspire me just to make people better. You know, it's part of my coaching philosophy. And I always talk about let's be better people first before we better cricketers. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about it. I think it's very difficult for me to explain it. I'll have to have a conversation with someone, but um, it doesn't take a lot for me to get motivated. You know, my dad always used to say, where there's a will, there's a way. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Jason, for jumping on board with me. I'm looking forward to getting to know you and to inspire more kids as you inspired me. Thank you so much. And that was a sixer interaction, of course, between uh, Dinesha Devnarayanji and Kaya Lishle uh, Nkabindeji. <laughs> and of course, Dinesha Ji is um, the Cricket South Africa un uh, Girls Under 19 Academy uh, coach. And Kaya Ji is a sports enthusiast. Thank you so much, Dinesha Ji, for that very interesting experience of uh, cricket. We've come to the close of episode two of Kel Vishwa. With that, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. C.P. Rayam Chunu from the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban to render this afternoon's vote of thanks. Namaskar. Greetings to all of you. On behalf of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, at the Consulate General of India in Devon. I am honored today to deliver a vote of thanks on our second episode of the program, Kel Vishwa, meaning World of Sport. Allow me to thank our online guest. Firstly, Ms. Dinesha Devnaranji. She is a cricket coach. She took us her journey through the world of sport. And that journey was uh, conducted by Mr. Kylie Senkabinde, a sport enthusiast, ent enthusiast. And to Kylie Sheji, thank you, sir. The interview that you conducted this evening was very much informative and also very interesting. To both of you, Dinesh Sheji and Kylie Sheji, thank you very much. May God bless you. To Director of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Sristi Harinarayan, Sri Piyush Kandilwal, thank you very much for taking part on today's program. To all our online viewers, we'd like to say thank you very much for taking part also on this program this evening. You are kindly advised to visit our Facebook page, ICCR Devon, so that you will be updated about all cultural activities organized by Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center. In the bed. Once again, to Dinesha Devnarayanji, Kylie Senkabindeji, thank you very much. To all of you, have a wonderful evening. Namaskar.